Good morning. I want to welcome you as we gather for this time of worship on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. The service we're using, you will find printed and inserted in your bulletin. Let us rise as we begin the invocation and confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, you have endured the foolish questions and demands of every generation. Forgive us for trying to judge you. And help us likewise to accept all people as our brothers and sisters. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the scripture readings. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from the Romans. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means, for I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but, from, but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient, in order that they may, that by the mercy they show, they've shown you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Be 
Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is recorded in St. Matthew chapter 15. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. We will continue with the singing of El Shaddai.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The words of our text are recorded in Matthew chapter 15, especially where it says, And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. So far the text. Back in 1983, a movie came out that really was quite popular about a, a man who planned a summer vacation for his family. His name was Clark Griswold. And the place where he decided to take them was to an amusement park in California. And that they would make the trip by car. For those of you who have seen the movie, you would recognize it as being in the National Lampoon's vacation. So here they go all the way out to California on a trip that is something that you don't really want to remember. But when they got there, their destination, they found out the park was closed. And of course, he became kind of upset about it and took actions that we would really not want to get into. Yeah, it's a funny movie. But think about it. If you had a vacation and your destination was closed, you wouldn't be very happy about that. Years ago, my wife planned a vacation for the two of us to go down to Fredericksburg, Virginia. She wanted to see the battlefields. Turned out they were closed due to a government shutdown. Needless to say, that was not a fun time. And you go to some of these battlefields and they had barriers set up or even people who would watch to see if somebody tried to come on the, the area. You know, so they were closed. Not a fun thing. What if you went to Jesus and you found that his heart was closed to you? you oh no, he's always open, his heart is always open, you say. But, Think about what was going on with this Canaanite woman. She came to Jesus, and she seemed to find not an open heart. And she's crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus did not even acknowledge her presence. She became a nuisance to the disciples who said to Jesus, Do something, Jesus. Send her away, whatever, do whatever. And Jesus responded to them, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Another closed door for that woman. And then she bowed down before the Lord and she said, have mercy. I mean, she said all the right words. Began by saying Lord, and that designation referred to deity. Son of David, even though she was not of the people of Israel, she was a Canaanite woman, she understood that he happened to be the Messiah. The son of David was a messianic designation. And she pleaded for mercy. And what did Jesus say to her? That it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. And in the Greek, the word for dogs means a tiny little dog that would be a household pet. And then she counters that by saying, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. So Jesus was really not responding to her at first, was he? You know, sometimes we just assume that the Lord's heart is always open and we're entitled to whatever we ask for and he'll take care of it. Almost as if we take advantage of his position and his person. He does want us to pray to him, even about little things. He wants us to pray. But sometimes our prayers can be rather, well, flippant, rather insignificant. Because sometimes what is important to you today may not be important to you tomorrow. I think in a way when I look at this gospel lesson, it reminds me of the importance of thinking about what we're asking for. Maybe in our prayers we really should take a deep, deep search into our hearts and into our lives and into our souls 
This woman prayed for something really important, her own daughter. This was a mother whose daughter was severely afflicted. And of course, she would be going to whatever source that she thought could help, and that was Jesus. And how she knew about Jesus, to me, is truly amazing. She would hear news about him and believe in him and have faith. For us, we need to take a, a deep look at ourselves and even to realize that sometimes when we pray, our Lord doesn't always seem to respond to our prayers. Sometimes it appears that he might have a close heart for us. Well, in reality, no, he doesn't. But he doesn't always respond to us as we would like or as soon as we pray. Because there's something more important at stake in our lives. And that is our faith. Because sometimes Jesus will test our faith to make it stronger. Or may seem to be closed in order that we can reflect upon, are we really praying for what we actually want or need? It helps us in our prayer life. Especially if he doesn't just answer immediately for what we're asking for. And even for this woman, she found at the end an open heart, didn't she? And she did get from the Lord what she had requested, a healed daughter. But something else happened with this encounter. Her faith was confirmed by our Lord. When he said, oh woman, great is your faith. Would he say that of you? Great is your faith? Or maybe, maybe you need to go through these times of trials with our Lord so that you can recognize the importance of not shirking, sh you know, shrinking away from the Lord, but keeping your faith focused on him. Because that is why he came, to show us that he is the Messiah, the Savior of all. And his heart and ears are open to our cries. And he wants to bring that faith in our lives out, sometimes so that other people can see, or sometimes so that you can recognize the importance of your own faith in your relationship to the Lord. You know, in the movie, National Lampoon's Vacation, at the end, the owner of that amusement park dropped all charges against Clark and his family and opened up the park so that they can enjoy it together. And it was like a happy ending to a really bizarre kind of a movie. But at the same time, when we focus our faith in our Lord, we will not be disappointed in the outcome of that faith. In the name of the Lord, amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. The altar flowers are given by the Brown family in memory of Joe and Phyllis Schlosser. The eternal light is lit by Kimberly and Christian Stein in loving memory of their departed grandmother, Eleanor Darby, and loving uncle Steve Darby forever in their hearts. I also have some other prayer requests to share. Prayer of thanks for Kelly, whose test results prove not to be cancer. For George, as he continues chemotherapy. For Wesley, for healing after surgery. For the family and friends of Walter in Florida, who passed away from COVID complications. And Donna Kelly requested prayer for the Strickland family at the death of her father, Stanley Strickland. With that in mind, please rise as we profess our faith were the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as a Canaanite woman approached you in faith, we come to you today with our needs as well as our thanksgivings. Listen to the prayers we offer to you now. We pray for those under the doctor's care, for George as he continues to receive chemotherapy, for Wesley following his surgery, for those we have named before you today, have mercy on them. Keep them all in your gracious and merciful heart and grant them healing and good medical care. And we offer our thanks for the blessings that we have received. We especially give you thanks for Kelly who received good results. Lord, in your mercy. And we offer, Lord, prayers for those who mourn, for the lonely, the distressed, for the family and friends of Walter at his death, for the family of Stanley Strickland at his passing. Grant them comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy. And to your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you for giving to us the body and blood of Jesus under the bread and wine for us to eat and to drink, through which we receive forgiveness, life, and salvation. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Just a reminder as you come up, keep a social distance at the communion rail, and we will place the little cups with the bread and the wine in front of you. You may be seated, and you can start up on the side. Take and eat the body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ. Take and drink the blood of Christ. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. May this true body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. God's peace is with you. Go in his peace and serve the Lord. Amen.
the other way. Take and eat the body of Christ, and take and drink the blood of your Lord Jesus Christ. Take and eat the body of Christ, and take and drink the blood of Christ. Take and eat the body of Christ, take and drink the blood of Christ. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the body of Christ. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. May this true body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. God's peace is with you. Go in his peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come of the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude with a hymn, Abide With Me.
Yeah.